Hey guys, this is Ray, and today I want to talk another morsel of philosophy your way, and it has to do with a basic concept that a lot of us kind of approve of without necessarily disapproving of it, and it's the Robin Hood concept. And we all know, um, well, most of us know, that Robin Hood basically tells a tale of robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. The only drawback to this Robin Hood concept is that there's still some theft going on. So if you look at all of the spiritual texts and scripts and, well, pretty much any kind of karma related incidents throughout time you'll note that everything references theft as something that is basically i want to call it a uh, a wronging of someone else so the energy the concept behind robin hood is very simple. It's very straightforward. And yet a lot of rhetoric and for an example, politics will reference things in this manner, Robin Hood and the energy, the very energy and connotation behind the fact that we would approve of something that is wronging someone else is almost a reflection. You know, it's like we've justified it what else will we justify? You understand? So, so when you, when you think about how things are set up and how we approve of certain things, it gets kind of complex because we can find ourselves judging ourselves. And that I think is the concept of when we come to, when the rain washes you clean, you'll know it's basically like a, uh, a revelation when you've forgiven yourself and when others have forgiven you. In other words, when you're at peace and it, it takes it takes quite a bit of communication with any parties that are involved in any kind of wrong, um, whether they've been wronged or whether they're wronging the other person. You know, these, these things are usually pretty straightforward and simple to discuss when people are in the moment. But it can get kind of complex when people try to cover up any of the aspects of what it is that has happened. And in a lot of cases, I think that the people who are having difficulties communicating fully and honestly are having a lot of trouble telling a story without breaking character. And that causes a little bit of con conflict, confusion between the unintegrated ego and spirit. So I know this all sounds real complex, but like I say, it's basically varying levels of approval of wrongdoing that people do to one another that helps us to justify what it is that we continue to hamstring ourselves with. So when we, when we think about something, the energy that's in it um, should really kind of have a foundational, it, it needs to have a foundation. Anything that we think of needs to have a foundation. When we go shopping, it needs to have a foundation. Does it do any of these things that are in these spiritual scripts, you know, in one way or another, whether we know it or not? And can we do research to find out if we're wronging other people by, I don't know, buying something that's theoretically um, hoarding all of the, the money to begin with, you know, and maybe we wouldn't have to rob the rich if we weren't paying the rich so much by buying the things that we continue to buy. I'm not sure. It's a, uh, it's a very interesting, simple yet highly complex topic to discuss things of this nature. So I hope you have a great day. I hope this all made sense. And I hope you understand that what I'm talking about takes just a little bit of thought and a little bit of understanding and a little bit of faith that what we're all trying to do is move in the direction of peace. And in order to bring peace about, we have to become peaceful ourselves. And sometimes 
people need to talk about what they're going through. And sometimes other people are listening and they understand and or decide to contribute some kind of insight into what's being said here. So if you're if you're unsure but you feel motivated to type something a question or 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 to ask to broaden the the topic or even to focus the topic down you know feel free to to have a conversation with me this is a open dialogue this is an open communication and it sounds very strange because i'm talking to you i don't know who you are <laughs> you know who are you who are listening to me And, um, I only know you based on our interactions. You know, the thing is that we're talking for a reason and we are having a communication that is public in some cases, especially when we continue our dialogue in, in public. And in order to do that, you have to be very open with who you are and that's, that's basically where we're at. You know, we're all having this moment together of seeing each other and maybe we just haven't asked the right questions. Maybe we haven't spent the right amount of time together to understand what it is that we're trying to achieve, but wellness and conservation is basically what I focus on. Sometimes I'll say wildlife and conservation uh, health and wellness. I've, I've confused it all kinds of different ways, but wellness and conservation are the underpinnings of what our very daily actions should amount to. So as we're walking those trails with one another and seeing each other eye to eye, you know, we can either say hello to, to one another, or we can ignore one another. Um, sometimes there's a combination of things that happen, but in either case, I hope that you say hi to one another on the trails. I hope that you discuss whatever it is that you've been meaning to discuss with one another and that the hostility and the tension and the bristling is reduced because that fire's already burned out. You know, there's no sense having a fight over something that's not even worth fighting about, you know? There's, there are many great songs that talk about the same thing. Um, Green Day has one. Do you know what's worth fighting for? Something like that. You know, I'm not not yet a professional singer. Um, but I've got some great songs for you. So I hope you stay tuned. I hope that you stayed tuned for this whole message. And I hope you understand that in every thing that we believe is a piece of rhetoric that we might need to look a little closer at because sometimes our personal lives and our outward lives are intermingled in ways that some of which are on autopilot and some of which are contributing to the very challenges that some of us are experiencing on a daily basis and it's it's uh it's an interesting complex and yet so simple situation so when I, when I talk about having these spiritual moments and when I talk about, well, you know, there are simple words in, in the Our Father, for an example. And when people become offended, it might be because I say it in a way that presents a lot of truth. And that's because I myself used to be offended by certain words and phrases. And then I started to recognize it wasn't just with Stuff like, I'll go so far as to say the international anthems, whether it's ours or others, the the whole point is there are words that we've said and we either believe them in our heart and those are the things taking priority or we take action based on what's in front of us. If the person in front of us is talking to us peacefully and they don't want to fight and they want to come up with a solution that makes sense for more than one person that sounds like compromise and compromise is about what we need in the world today and there would not need to be a lot of robin robin hood if we learned that some people can clearly see that they have more and if they only shared where it counted to begin with 
perhaps there would be no stealing and theft going on. You know, I mean, if we have people clamoring for something that they feel like they deserve or that they need and they cannot get to it and other people can get to it, it's kind of weird. It's, it's, uh, you know, we know that there's, there, there are discerning amounts of, of, income based on a variety of, of, of traits and characteristics. But again, this is talking about what we accept as, as some, if we knew a mega wealthy person was not going to hurt if we took $10,000 out of their account and, uh, and applied it to our own outstanding debt, you know, to, to cover bills. If we knew that was going to happen, there's, a, a certain humility to asking for that from, from the Godfather, you know, to asking for that gift, you, you know, you're going to be on the hook for it. But again, debts and a lot of debts don't come just from nothing. You know, they, they accumulate and sometimes they accumulate generationally through families. And so the one thing I want to tell you that is the most true thing that I've ever heard or even possibly said is that you don't owe for your family's debts. Your family created their own debt and um, whatever their prior debts were, they might carry down to you. You might have some kind of responsibility, but you don't owe them. So whatever you're doing, the energy needs to be coming from a place of gratitude. And until I did that, I couldn't understand how to get off the hook, you know? I have some interesting situations going on in my own uh, personal life. And the the thing is that I don't, just like anyone else, I don't owe for anyone else's mistakes. You know, I, I, I shouldn't have to somehow struggle to figure out how to come up with these accommodations to help someone else pass through their own challenges. And yet that's kind of what's being asked of a lot of people. And so we feel this weight and we either forgive the weight or we continue to carry it as a burden. And in most texts that talk about peace and spirituality, they talk about the burden being handled and carried and borne by somebody else who really helped another entity, a power, higher power. These are things that are talked about when we talk to segments who are dealing with addiction or who are just trying to come to peace. And the only way that we can admit to these truths is to respond in our own head by taking note. Do we bristle when someone says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name? What do those words mean to you? How does it make you feel? I know how it makes me feel. It makes me feel at ease. It's like I'm talking about an entity, a higher power that I believe in. And that higher power translates directly to me when I look out at nature, when I walk in nature, when I see one, when I see another person, you know, all of this is a higher power. You're a higher power. You're part of it. You're, you're created in some image whether you consider that just in the image of your parents um, or your society or whatever you want to see. The thing is that until you see that you possibly respond with anger or emotion that is programmed in with a series of Robin Hood rhetoric that has stolen from the rich knowledge that we have and distributed it to the very poorest of, of, of uh, so the poorest of the self-control segment who is using all that wealth without ever considering that, hey, there's some people that just can't even figure out how to afford their next meal, you know? And the beauty of all of it is that it's all entertainment. So anything that we put ourselves through on each and every day that we participate in is some type of entertainment, you know, even the work that we're doing can be entertainment. It depends on what kind of work we want to do. If we're working just for the benefits and the pay of it, you know, we're possibly performing Robin Hood ourselves. We're working at a place that has a lot to give out so much that they 
can hire from someone who doesn't even consider that profession their most prized their most prized um, job you know their most prized situation and I know that because I've done work where I didn't necessarily think that was my most prized work but it was all it was all pretty amazing my very first job was working as a porter a person who washed cars sorry this I'm holding this phone here and a person who washes cars all day in San Antonio Texas can get kind of hot you know so it was a lot of hard work but I worked at a porter for this place called Porsche and um, it was a sports car dealership, Porsche, Volvo. And it, so it, it was a sports car dealership that often received trades for um, for luxury vehicles, you know, and vice versa. So I got to drive a little bit of everything, Ferraris. Um, the one thing I didn't drive was a Lamborghini, but I got to see one get unloaded. And it was every bit the dream car that I always admired. It's quite small, though, for me. And so even though it's like my dream car it was too small for me to actively drive around on a regular daily basis and so um, I, I never really wanted it you know as a personal car the whole point that I'm talking about is in a Robin Hood society if there are people who have stockpiled Lamborghinis in their garages and they're not even driving them well I can be willing to bet that there are a lot of people throughout the world who would love the opportunity to drive something like that. Have they got the responsibility to do something like that? It's not up to me to judge. It's just up to me to know that there are some people who are built to fit in certain vehicles and they want that vehicle. You know, I'm super, uh, well, I'm not super tall, but I'm quite tall and in order for me to be comfortable in a vehicle, I have to have room for my head to, you know, when if you run over bumps in the road, you don't want to jostle up and, and, you know, thrash your head into the ceiling. And oftentimes I wear a baseball cap or some kind of shade, brimmed cap, you know, to keep the sun off my skin sometimes. And those kind of things are things that I might get into the car wearing. And so if you have a little bit of additional on the top of your head and you keep bouncing and hitting the ceiling, it's uncomfortable. It's kind of, it's kind of annoying. So what I'm saying is imagine how annoying it would be if I could only drive a Lamborghini Diablo. I could never go off road. I would be jostling my head against the ceiling. Um, I would have trouble seeing there would be blind spots for me and I would feel quite disappointed if I every day had to be doing something that I didn't want to do. But I would tell myself, you know, it's a Lamborghini Diablo. This is pre prestige. Sometimes pride can take control and pride can get you to a point where you misrepresent whether you're happy or not. If you're happy and you know it, what do you do? You clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, did you see that and see the smile? <laughs> There's a lot of smiles and sarcasm, smiles and puns, smiles and fun. Um, there's a lot of fun. I try to make my, my workspace, which is basically my vehicle. Uh, everything about where I go into nature is my workspace. Every time I talk about nature, that's my workflow. Every time I take on any kind of work it usually centers around whether or not I have access to wildlife and nature so I'm talking about wildlife I'm talking about wellness and conservation I'm telling you that there are people that have a lot of money to contribute to causes that all are intertwined and the only way that we can resonate at a frequency is to translate that energy into something that's universal so money is definitely something that's universal um, I'm telling you that right now, I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm open to it. I'm open to it. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm open to a non Robin hood transfer of funds from someone who has a lot that might even mean me, you know, compared to someone else comparatively. We each have a lot, but someone has a lot in a way where they're able to help me to see past my financial hurdles. 
and they're going to help me to release me from that challenge that I had previously. And that's going to happen. It's going to happen by the third quarter of this year. It already, it's already something that's been spoken into existence several times. And I know it's coming and I know it's going to come based on my own contributions. And so I'm telling you, now that you know, especially after this whole series, now that you know a little bit more about me, you know my demeanor, you know that I sometimes say things in a funny way. It's almost like I'm using words verbatim, you know, I'm very, what's the word? Don't know the word right off the bat, but basically when you, when you say something and it, it, it's exactly at face value, you know, that's, that's kind of what I, what I bring to the table. So I talk very specifically, some people call it spelling and how you say it is what happens. Um, and how I'm saying it is monetarily I'm free. I've been free for a long time. I've just had trouble resonating in the past at, at a vibration that included the possibility that maybe even Robin Hood was not great because the very foundational underpinnings of all of our beliefs should include that everyone has the right to the same amount of respect. And what I mean by that is income level, um, prestige, you know, doesn't matter if you're in a spray painted rust bucket or a Lamborghini Diablo Either one, if it doesn't fit the driver, is an unpleasant experience. And so each each foot has its shoe. Each shoe has its foot. As above, so below. The, the thing is that when we rob or believe that it's okay to rob any segment of anything and... It's even if it's especially if it's justified because oh well we're giving to the poor that's that's all judgment and that's all breaking the basic foundation so every choice that we make when we go to the store and purchase something it should consider is it is it robbing the the ocean of 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 clean water you know or are these plastic items going to do something good for or bad for as much as we grab for these things that's why it all still exists. And self-control is a very difficult thing to, to understand until you put wellness and conservation hand in hand. And the only way that those things can be recognized is when the energy of money translates into a recognition that someone is talking sense and sensibly and without want to cause war. And, and they're describing a situation that we all know as true. We just don't know how to do it. And we don't know how to do it because the rhetoric keeps us from having a complete discussion that actually results in tangible changes. So until next time, I'm Ray with MotherNatureFramed.com. These websites, I technology, you know, you're either there or you're not and you don't you, you don't get the same benefit usually from nature if you're not in nature. That's where I'm about to go. Haven't even done it yet. Um, there's this other cat down the road that says we ain't even had breakfast yet and and basically that's kind of where we're at, you know. If if you if you if you really get to a point where you're focused on things that are not yourself you don't even wake up wanting to go eat right away you know think about how toddlers wake up and they want to play with the toy or they want to complete a project that they were working on the day before that's the joy that we have when we are following our true path that's the joy we have when we are doing our work and doing our work doesn't necessarily translate into dollars if one segment can't connect with the other. In other words, 
some of us did come up with a lot of money. And like I say, I know you're listening. I'm not sure who you are. You're listening to me. And some of us did not come up with a lot of money. And some of us who didn't come up with a lot of money, our families had a debt to repay, which caused us struggle. And when I, when I talk about that, some people want to understand, well, Ray, if, if, you know, if, if one of my parents made a bad decision, how, how am I on the hook for it? Well, let me theorize, postulate, present something to you. What if you had a relative who was given a property and that property was something that your grandparents told you yourself? This is going to be yours. One day this is going to be yours. And so in order to have that happen, they gave it to your one of your parents. And that parent, for whatever reason, destroyed that location or just let it fall apart. And that place was willed to you. You're, you're being willed something, but it's destroyed. So how, how likely are you to feel the gratitude that someone took care it's like if someone didn't take care of something you might feel more sad or discouraged or something about it but the point is that that place still needs to be repaired you know and so this thing of value even think of our own bodies when we give ourselves to one another even think of our own bodies this thing of value if we're just giving it away, if we're just not maintaining it, you know, and letting it go to waste, what are, what are we doing? We're not honoring that source, the creator, our father. We're not. And so when it comes to talking about these truths, it's apparent how clearly someone is telling their story. And the only other thing that's apparent is whether or not someone can actually hear the story to begin with. And sometimes we can't hear the story because we have a division, you know, whether it's this screen itself that's keeping us divided or whether it's the ego and the spirit having an internal discussion. But those things are usually something that we tune out of right when we become agitated or frustrated. And if we're not tuning out, then we've heard this whole message and we understand just how glaringly true that everything that's being said here is. And so then we understand some, some people might have been left with a situation where they don't see a lot of hope, you know, but they still do the work and they're doing the work because it's not, it's not even a matter of hope. It's, it's like some people have faith and some people don't. I have faith. It's going to work out. So I keep, keep doing the work, you know, it's going to work out. I know it's going to work out. And that's why I'm talking with you right now today. And you know, it's going to work out. The only thing you don't know is that I'm telling you monetarily, I have been presented with a stumbling block and I've been working around it as best as I can. And at the same time, I, there's no, there's no Robin hood solution. You know, there's no, there's no Robin hood solution vote. That's going to help these things that we want to happen, happen. There's only the work. And the work, again, needs to translate into dollars. So if someone's doing the work and telling the story and bridging the communication barriers that have not been bridged before, and if you find that you're in a position to help contribute to those, those deeds of wellness and conservation, please feel free to contribute to me. You can see at the bottom of my description on my YouTube page exactly how to do that. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Peace and stay tuned. I'll show you what I saw in the trails as well. Have a great day.